Welcome to a captivating journey through one of the most enigmatic wonders of ancient Egypt, the Bent Pyramid of King Snefru in Dasher. In the heart of the desert, this architectural marvel stands as a testament to the ingenuity and grandeur of the ancient world. As we delve into the secrets of this magnificent structure, we'll uncover the tales of its construction, its mystical significance in the ancient Egyptian culture, and the mysteries that have baffled historians for centuries. Join us on an adventure that transcends time and space, as we unravel the mysteries surrounding this extraordinary pyramid. Prepare to be amazed by the precision engineering that allowed for the creation of this one-of-a-kind architectural marvel. Discover the legends and myths that shroud the pyramid, and the incredible stories of the artisans and laborers who toiled under the scorching Egyptian sun to bring it to life. But our journey doesn't stop there. We'll also explore the modern-day significance of the Bent Pyramid and its impact on our understanding of ancient Egypt's rich history. So, fasten your seatbelts and get ready to embark on an extraordinary expedition back in time. Together, we'll unveil the hidden treasures of the Bent Pyramid, and you'll gain a newfound appreciation for the wonders of the ancient world. Join us as we unlock the mysteries, decode the hieroglyphs, and experience the majesty of Egypt's Bent Pyramid like never before. But before we begin, I'd like to thank the website, ISIDA Project for allowing me to use some of the materials I needed for this episode. Thanks also to you, my humble channel's followers, for your encouragement and comments, which always contribute to the development of research on ancient Egypt's history. I would like you to inform me in the comments about anything you would like us to explore together in the history of one of the world's oldest civilizations, the ancient Egyptian civilization. And now, Let's start our journey about the Bent Pyramid of Sneferu. The Bent Pyramid is one of the earliest Egyptian pyramids and was constructed during the Old Kingdom period, during the reign of King Sneferu, who ruled Egypt from around 2613 BC to about 2589 BC. The pyramid is located in the Dasher region, near the city of Memphis. Dasher is situated approximately 40 kilometers south of Cairo, in the Giza Governorate, specifically in the Bedrashan district. Dasher is a significant tourist area known for its ancient Egyptian royal necropolis, which includes several pyramids built during the period between 2613-2589 BC. Sneferu's Bent Pyramid was the first pyramid constructed in Dasher. The second pyramid built by King Sneferu in Dasher is known as the Red Pyramid. In the 12th dynasty, King Amenemhat II also constructed a pyramid in Dasher, now called the White Pyramid. In addition to the pyramids, Dasher is home to numerous royal tombs, including those of princesses, which contained a wealth of finely crafted jewelry and jewels. Several smaller pyramids for royal princesses are also found to the south of Dasher. Dasher is also known for its extensive tombs of officials from the Old Kingdom and Middle Kingdom periods, located around the Dasher pyramids. As for the Bent Pyramid, the subject of today's episode, it is associated with King Sneferu. Let's learn a bit about King Sneferu. Sneferu reigned approximately between 2613 and 2589 BC and was the first pharaoh of the 4th dynasty. His parents are believed to be Huni and Merizank I, with Huni being the last pharaoh of the 3rd dynasty. Merizank I was likely not of royal blood but rather a concubine of the king. Sneferu married his half-sister Hedefir's I, who was the daughter of Huni from an unknown concubine or wife. Her pyramid is located in Giza. Regardless of his lineage, Sneferu is remembered in later times as a great pharaoh. Later kings, such as Amenemhat I, would invoke his legacy as the ideal and divine pharaoh to legitimize their own power. Our knowledge of his accomplishments primarily comes from archaeological fragments like the Palermo Stone, a document from the 5th dynasty, 
2392-2283 BC. According to the Palermo Stone, Sneferu achieved several significant feats during his reign. In his twelfth year, he led military expeditions into Nubia, where he captured 7,000 prisoners and seized 200,000 heads of cattle. He also conducted a campaign in Libya, capturing 11,000 prisoners and acquiring 13,100 heads of cattle. These military campaigns had economic motives, as they solidified Egyptian control over trade caravans carrying valuable African goods, including ebony, ivory, incense, ostrich eggs, panther skins, giraffes, and monkeys. Moreover, they secured access to gold deposits in Nubia and Diorite from Abu Simbel. According to the Palermo Stone, Sneferu also oversaw the construction of 100 cubit, 52 m, 170 feet, ships to import cedar and various types of wood essential for his numerous building projects. Additionally, another fragmentary stella, Je 38568, in the Egypt Museum carved into a rock cliff at Wadi Megara in Sinai recounts his victory over the Bedouin. This military success secured access to turquoise and copper mines in Wadi Nash and Wadi Megara in western Sinai, a strategic move that had been practiced since the time of Sinan. Fragmented statues of Sneferu were discovered in the valley temple of his bent pyramid at Dasher when Ahmed Fakhri conducted excavations there in the 1950s. Among these, the most notable is J98943, a 180 cm tall limestone figure that was reconstructed by a German team. Additionally, there is Stella Je 89289 depicting Sneferu with his names and dressed in his jubilee attire. However, Sneferu's most significant achievements were not his military campaigns but the construction of at least three great pyramids, one at Maidam and two colossal ones at Dasher. According to estimates by Miroslav Werner, Sneferu would have mobilized and raised approximately 3.7 million cubic meters of stone for the construction of these marvels, making him the greatest pyramid builder of all time. His successors in the 4th dynasty also built the Great Pyramids at Giza, with his son Khufu having constructed the largest and most famous pyramid in Egypt. Despite his monumental achievements, Sneferu is remembered for his humility as a ruler, in contrast to his son's legacy, as records indicate that he referred to his subjects as friend and brother. To learn more about King Sneferu, his reign, and his family, I will provide you with the link to the video where I discuss his era in the description. But for now, let's return to today's topic, the Bent Pyramid. After the project at Maidam, Sneferu turned to Dasher for his next megalithic constructions and began with the so-called bent, rhomboidal, or double, pyramid. Its name derives from a noticeable change in the angle of the superstructure. The lower half of the pyramid was built at an angle of approximately 54 degrees while the upper half was constructed at an angle of about 44 degrees. However, this alteration in angle is not the only unique feature of the Bent Pyramid. Apart from a conventional entrance near the center of the northern face, approximately 12 meters above ground level, the Bent Pyramid also has a second entrance high on the western face, situated more than 30 meters above the surrounding desert. These two entrances lead to distinct parts of the internal chambers. Some researchers have interpreted this, along with evidence of structural movement that may have occurred during construction, as an indication that difficulties were encountered during the building process. According to these theories, the design changes that were taken to address these difficulties led to a structure that departed significantly from what had been intended.
and unfortunately, any attempt to understand the Bent Pyramid is hampered because existing surveys conflict with one another in a number of key respects. 1. It does appear that movement of the structure occurred during construction, and 2. Some of the Bent Pyramid's unusual features may have been introduced in response to these construction problems. And here, we are trying to understand together this mysterious structure. The substructure, the construction challenges. While the expansive and open plateau at Dasher might seem ideal for constructing a large pyramid, there is evidence that suggests the ground conditions may not have been perfect. The geological strata at Dasher are notably younger than the limestone formations found at other pyramid sites. The geological map of the Greater Cairo area characterizes the ground conditions at Dasher as sands and sandstones and gravels. If, as this description implies, the bedrock at Dasher contains pockets of sand and gravel, these ground conditions may have played a role in the construction challenges encountered during the building of the pyramid. In addition to potential issues resulting from adverse ground conditions, the project at Dasher also faced a series of technical challenges associated with the intended layout of the internal passages and chambers. The preceding pyramid at Midam featured an innovation. For the first time, the pyramid entrance was placed on the pyramid face. Rather than tunneling through the surrounding bedrock, a passage descends through the Midam pyramid superstructure to a depth of around 7 meters below ground level. This approach was also adopted for the bent pyramid. However, the plans for Dasher were far more ambitious, with the lower end of the northern passage extending more than 22 meters below ground level. It also seems reasonable to assume that for the internal chambers of the Bent Pyramid, the intention had been to follow the pattern attempted at Midam and seen at the subsequent Red Pyramid at Dasher. Here the descending passage leads to a pair of near-identical antechambers separated by a short section of horizontal passage. The antechambers and horizontal passage thus shared a common floor level, convenient for bulky funerary equipment. When the interior of the bent pyramid was initially documented in the 1830s, it was observed that peculiarly, ancient masonry steps had been added afterward to address the varying floor levels between the first and second antechambers. I believe that the necessity for these steps resulted from the initial significant alteration to the design of the bent pyramid, which was implemented by the construction manager. The systematic archaeological excavations of the pyramid. The first systematic archaeological excavations of the pyramid began with Pering in 1939, who cleaned the interior chambers. Subsequent explorations were conducted by Lepsius and Petrie in the 19th century. Abdul Salam Hussain and Alexander Verrill further studied the structure in the first half of the 20th century, although their works beyond 1945 have been lost. In 1945, the Pyramid Studies Project led by Abdul Salam Muhammad Hussain initiated the cleaning of the pyramid's interior once more. After the project leader's death, Abdul Salam Effendi took over until his own death in 1949. In the 1950s, Ahmad Fakhri published his archaeological investigations in three comprehensive volumes titled, The Monuments of Sneferu at Dasher. Later studies were conducted by Italian architects Marigiolio and Rinaldi in 1964. In the 1980s, the German Archaeological Institute in Cairo initiated further archaeological studies under the direction of Rainer Stadelmann. Additionally, a new survey of the pyramid was carried out by Austrian geodesist Joseph Dörner in 1986. These research efforts have contributed significantly to our understanding of the Bent Pyramid and its history. Abdul Salam Effendi found a crude cartouche of Sneferu drawn with red pigment in the interior of the pyramid, more precisely in the upper chamber's corbel vault. The openings of the side walls of this upper chamber exposed the remains of cedar beams, 
a finding that reminds us of the information on the Palermo stone mentioning how Snafiru had 40 ships importing cedar from Lebanon. In turn, Fakhri found a fragment of a Stella with Snefiru seated in his jubilation attire within a Sarek and the Horus Falcon atop. It is one of two stelae that stood on the east side of the satellite or cult pyramid, while another pair, originally 9 meters tall, stood in the pyramid temple. More hints at the pyramid's owner were found at the Valley Temple, where several scenes show Snefiru's name and parts of his body. The Dimensions of the Bent Pyramid the dimensions of the Bent Pyramid have been surveyed by Pering, Petrie, Mustafa, and Derner. It has a base length of 189 meters and a height for the bottom section of 47 meters. The slope angle of the bottom section is 54 degrees, while the top pyramid has a height of 57 meters and a slope angle of 43 degrees. The total height of the Bent Pyramid is 104 meters, and its volume is estimated at around 1,460,000 cubic meters. Petrie's survey has demonstrated the impressive precision of its cardinal alignments, deviating from the true cardinal points by an average of 0 degrees, 9 minutes, and 12.4 seconds. The surrounding parabolos or temenos wall. The surrounding parabolos or temenos wall was 2.05 meters thick and square in form, having a side length of 298.63 meters on its inner face. The mean distance from the double pyramid to the outer side of the wall is 25.21 meters, and it extends to the south to encompass the satellite pyramid. Now, the bent pyramid is not only unique for its double slope but also because it has two entrance corridors and two inner chambers with corbel vault ceilings. The northern entrance. The northern entrance is located at a height of 11.8 meters and has both a height and width of 1.06 meters. Its initial slope angle is 28 degrees and 38 minutes for 12.6 meters, and then it shifts to 26 degrees and 10 minutes for the other 66 meters, having a total length of 78.6 meters. At the bottom, it turns horizontal for a mere 0.85 meters and immediately increases its height to 12.6 meters, maintaining its thin width for another 4.9 meters. The corbel vault chamber is elevated at 7.1 meters and has to be reached by a ladder. Its height is 17.3 meters with a length of 6.3 meters, and it opens to the right, west, at 4.96 meters. At ground level and aligned with the entrance corridor, there is a 1.95 meters long and 1.6 meters wide passage to the south that leads to the so-called chimney, 15.3 meters tall, 1.50 meters long, maintaining its 1.6 meters width like the short passage. The end of this chimney matches the vertical axis of the pyramid. The Western Entrance The Western Entrance is located much higher than its northern counterpart, at 33.32 meters, and also has an offset from the EW axis of 13.7 meters to the south. It runs at an angle of 30 degrees in 9 minutes for an initial 21.81 meters, and then changes to 24 degrees in 17 minutes for another 45.85 meters giving a total length of 67.66 meters, with a width of 1 meter and a height of 1.1 meters. At the bottom, it turns horizontal at 3.2 meters above ground level and reaches a first portcullis after 2.43 meters. It then widens to 1.25 meters and a height of 1.63 meters, stretching for 16.76 meters before reaching the second portcullis, after which the height shifts to 1.59 meters. In total, the horizontal corridor extends for 19.5 meters before reaching the corbel vault, upper, chamber, which measures 5.26 meters long, 7.97 meters wide, and has a height of 16.5 meters. Between the two portcullis, a rough and winding corridor 74 centimeters wide and 92 centimeters high was dug on the north wall of the horizontal corridor and reached the lower chamber's corbel vault. Stadelman believes this corridor aimed at the chimney of the lower chambers of the north side, but missed its mark by about a meter, ending up in the corbel vault of the lower chamber. As a final note regarding the inner chambers of the double pyramid, it's important to mention that when Pering began to clear the northern corridor on September 20, 1839, his excavations had to be halted due to a strong wind current blowing through the passageway. At that time, the western entrance was still sealed by the original masonry, and the only entrance being used was the northern one which he was still exploring. 
Almost a century later, when Fakhri continued explorations in the 1950s, the western entrance was still sealed. He mentioned that, on some windy days, inside the pyramid, especially on the horizontal part of the west corridor between the two barriers, a sound can be heard that occasionally lasts nearly 10 seconds. At the time of this statement, Fakhri had not yet opened the western entrance, which suggests the possibility of undiscovered inner chambers within the pyramid. Now, let's shift our focus back to the exterior of the pyramid. Right next to the bent pyramid, we have a smaller pyramid, often referred to as the satellite or cult pyramid. This is where Ahmed Fakhri made a remarkable discovery when he uncovered the upper part of a stella known as Je 89289, in the Egypt Museum now. The satellite pyramid is aligned with the north-south axis of the bent pyramid and is positioned at a distance of approximately 52.06 meters or about 99 royal cubits. It's also surrounded by a temenos wall standing at a height of 5.5 meters. The satellite pyramid has a base length of about 52.44 meters or 100 royal cubits and a reconstructed height of approximately 25.83 meters. It's not as massive as the bent pyramid, but it still has some unique features worth exploring. First off, it has an entrance corridor on its northern face, measuring 1.23 meters in height and 1.20 meters in width at ground level. This corridor slopes downward at an angle of about 34 degrees for a distance of 10.32 meters. Then, it takes a short horizontal break for about 1.50 meters before continuing to ascend at a similar angle of approximately 32 degrees and 30 minutes. This upward passage spans about 14.85 meters and leads to the Corbel Vault Chamber. The chamber itself is quite intriguing. It reaches a height of 6.90 meters and is almost square in shape, with dimensions of 2.62 meters by 2.49 meters. But here's the kicker. There's a rather ominous pit inside the chamber, plunging down to a depth of 4.20 meters and measuring 1.25 meters in width. Interestingly, the widening of the ascending passage in the satellite pyramid resembles the Great Gallery found in the Great Pyramid of Khufu. It's almost like a scaled-down version, and it makes you wonder if it served as a model for future pyramids built by Sneferu's successors. The entire complex of the Bent Pyramid was enclosed by a massive wall made of yellowish-gray limestone. There was a main entrance on the northeast side, about 50 meters from the eastern wall. This entrance connected to a 704-meter causeway that took a bend further east after 75 meters, and then extended another 629 meters to finally reach the pyramid complex and the valley temple. This causeway had an open avenue, 3 meters wide and without a roof. Along its sides ran two low stone walls with curved tops, measuring 1.90 meters wide and 1.90 meters tall. This causeway was part of the path that King Sneferu took to travel from the Valley Temple to his pyramid. It extended for miles across the desert and holds many secrets and mysteries. The Valley Temple The Valley Temple is an incredible archaeological discovery, and it was the very first temple of its kind. This rectangular structure is carefully aligned with the cardinal directions. Imagine a length of about 47.16 meters running from north to south, and a width of approximately 26.20 meters from east to west. To protect and enclose this significant site, a thick mud brick wall, 2.00 meters wide, was constructed. This protective wall was positioned at a distance of 12.5 meters from the temple's eastern and western sides, while it stood 15 meters away from the northern and southern walls. What's truly fascinating is that the eastern exit of the valley temple stretches for around 140 meters, leading to a massive rectangular basin. This basin, measuring approximately 90 meters in width and 140 meters in length, was uncovered during archaeological investigations in 2009. It's an extraordinary piece of history that adds more layers to the intriguing story of the Bent Pyramid Complex. In the early 1950s, Fakhri made several fascinating discoveries, including a statue of Sneferu and around 1400 fragments of reliefs. Among these findings, one of the most intriguing is a depiction of Sneferu standing nose to nose with a feline deity, possibly Tefnut, Shu, or Sekhmet. Fakhri also uncovered many statues, albeit in fragmented states, dating from the 4th to the 6th and 12th dynasties. 
Another significant find was the stela of Prince Neder Aper F from the 4th dynasty. The name Neder Aper F translates to, provided by his god. His mastaba, was situated in the region of Old Kingdom Mastabas located between the Bent Pyramid and the Red Pyramid of Sneferu. It is believed that his stela was originally placed in this mastaba and later moved to the Valley Temple. This remarkable artifact provides us with a glimpse into the life of a man named Neder Aper EF, who held various prestigious titles, including prophet, administrator, and scribe with whom the god is satisfied. Quite the resume, right? Now, what makes this stela even more exciting is that it mentions none other than Sneferu, the pharaoh renowned for his pyramid-building prowess. Sneferu is described as the foremost provider of glory through the great god in the house of life, and held positions such as chamberlain, scribe, and king's son. Impressive, to say the least. The stela also sheds light on Neder Aper F's roles as a judge in Herui, the fifth gnome of Upper Egypt and a player of the Sistra, in MSH, probably Dendera, the sixth gnome of Upper Egypt. So, not only does this artifact give us a glimpse into the life and titles of Neder Aper EF, but it also links him to the illustrious Sneferu, a pharaoh famous for his pyramid-building achievements. Talk about an ancient Egyptian power duo. A priest named Dwer. This is a fascinating discovery, my friends. Let's delve into the intriguing story of a priest named Dwer from the early 5th dynasty in ancient Egypt. Dwer lived during a remarkable period in history, and we can determine this from the inscriptions in his tomb. His mastaba, a type of ancient Egyptian tomb, was constructed to the east of Sneferu's famous Bent Pyramid. He was part of a community of individuals who lived during the 4th and 5th dynasties, which was a time of significant cultural and architectural achievements. What makes Dwer's story even more compelling is the titles he held. He was known as the Overseer of Sneferu's Two Glorious Pyramids, and the Overseer of Sneferu's Glorious Pyramid of the South. These titles suggest that he played a significant role in the management and maintenance of Sneferu's remarkable pyramids. The inscriptions on the pedestal of his statue provide us with some fascinating insights, my friends. It seems that the Bent Pyramid, which we discussing, was referred to as Sneferu's Glorious Pyramid of the South, or Sneferu's Shining Pyramid of the South. Moreover, when combined with the Red Pyramid, they were collectively known as Sneferu's Two Glorious Pyramids. These designations shed light on the grandeur and significance of these pyramids during the reign of King Sneferu. It's incredible how ancient inscriptions can reveal so much about the names and perceptions of these magnificent structures. The form of the Bent Pyramid When it comes to the distinctive shape of the Bent Pyramid, there are two main theories among Egyptologists. Symbolic Design Theory Some scholars suggest that the unique design of the Bent Pyramid, with its change in slope angle at a specific height, was intentional. They believe it was meant to convey a symbolic or religious meaning through its architecture. In ancient Egypt, pyramids were not only tombs but also held deep religious significance, and their form and dimensions were often laden with symbolism. Stability Correction Theory Another theory posits that the Bent Pyramid's unusual shape was a result of corrective measures taken by the builders during construction. According to this view, as the pyramid was being built, it may have started to show signs of instability or structural issues. To address these problems and prevent a collapse, the builders adjusted the slope angle at a certain height, creating the distinctive form we see today. These theories offer different interpretations of the pyramid's design and purpose, and ongoing research and archaeological discoveries may shed more light on this intriguing architectural mystery. The argument for the Bent Pyramid's unique design being a result of structural instability and correction is supported by several observations made by experts such as Marijolio and Rinaldi. These observations include cracks in the outer casing, entrance passages, and inner chambers, with the inner chambers having been covered in gypsum plaster. Additionally, it's noted that the pyramid was built on a soft layer of slaty clay rather than a solid rock base, which is not ideal for such a massive construction. Marijolio and Rinaldi also pointed out that the displacements in the descending corridors, despite being on different sides, both matched a 60 angle. 
This comparison led them to suggest that the pyramid was initially constructed with a steep 60 angle on a base of 300 cubits and was later expanded to 360 cubits with a shift in angle to 54, the lower base we see today. The displacement of the corridors could thus be explained by the shift between the inner and outer structures. Many Egyptologists, including Ahmed Fakhri, Marijolio and Rinaldi, Rainer Stadelman, Mark Lenner, and Miroslav Werner, support this thesis of structural failure and miscalculation. It's worth noting that this idea is widely accepted in the field of Egyptology and can be found in most works on the pyramids and related studies. On the other hand, the first theory mentioned, which proposes a purposeful or intentional design is supported by certain mathematical, geometrical, and religious ideas which are believed to be inscribed in the architecture of this bent pyramid. Some of the scholars that have supported this theory are Alexandre Verrill, R. A. Schwaller de Lubas, John A. R. Legan, and Keith Hamilton. Likewise, the renowned archaeoastronomers Giulio Magli and Juan Antonio Belmonte second the idea of a purposeful plan. Moreover, there is the curious reference in the Palermo Stone to the erecting of two monuments that Egyptologists are unable to identify, and yet everything seems to indicate that it is a reference to the two pyramids at Dasher. And with that, we wrap up this intriguing journey into the world of the Bent Pyramid and the amazing discoveries made at this historical site. But this is not all about this mysterious pyramid. If we were to delve into more details about this pyramid, we would need dozens, if not hundreds of episodes to discuss everything related to the Pyramid of King Sneferu. We can also talk about the discoveries made throughout the ages and the Egyptologists who conducted expeditions in the Dasher area, especially around this pyramid. However, there will still be many unanswered questions about this pyramid that do not have definitive answers to this day. In the shadow of the ages, the Bent Pyramid has stood as a silent sentinel, guarding the secrets of ancient Egypt. We've embarked on a remarkable journey through time and culture, uncovering the mysteries and stories that surround this architectural marvel. But the exploration doesn't end here. Our world is brimming with wonders yet to be discovered, and history is an endless adventure. If you've enjoyed this expedition into the Bent Pyramid, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. By doing so, you become a fellow traveler on our quest to unravel the mysteries of our world. As we prepare for new adventures and unveil the treasures of the past, we invite you to join us in the ongoing exploration of our fascinating planet. Until next time, keep your curiosity alive, keep exploring, and keep embracing the wonders of history. Thank you for being a part of our journey.